Oh. Sweet Truth episode two. This is Sweet Truth episode two. Welcome to Sweet Truth, episode two, and let's introduce our guests today. So we have an unusual guest today, <laughs> Emma. Hello. Are you very happy to be here, or I'm was usu- this voluntary? I'm usually on the other side, but got, got to do these it. things, haven't you? Yeah, I think she's an important voice to speak today, so we've got a treat. And <laughs> hello, Rosie. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. Nice to have you today. I'm looking forward to this. So, <laughs> <laughs> I promise you it gets better, I promise you. So you're both photographers there. Tell us a bit about your work. We'll go start with Emma. So it's mostly fashion. Um, do a few odd, other odd jobs as well, but it's all the girls. Just yeah. taking pictures of honeys mm. every day. Very good. <laughs> yes. What about you, Rosie? Um, I'm quite similar, so I do uh, fashion and lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so that can be yeah, models, bloggers, uh, for brands, bit of bit of everything. How did you both get into this then? Like, what was your influence? Um, so when I took a picture when I was like 14, and then I decided that wow, I'm going to be a photographer. Really? Like that photo changed my life. <laughs> What photo was it? Yeah, what it was, was it? It was so shit. Um, it was a picture of myself, like a reflection in my guitar. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I know that's, re- that's really <laughs> shit, but that, it just changed my life. And then I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just try this. Yeah. And then I started doing like band stuff when I was like 16. Oh. Um, and then I did it at college. And then I did it at uni. So I've always wanted to do it. Like that's the... I've, not, I've never wanted to do anything else. Did you start off doing music then? Like, I mean, yeah. yeah, when I was like 16, yeah, like, yeah. not properly. <laughs> <laughs> no one will ever see the pictures, probably. <laughs> I don't have them on my, uh, on my website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you start out then? Um, I don't know. I think I always used to take photos of friends. Um, and I always had a camera with me and everyone would get really annoyed with me because I'd just be taking photos all the time. And then... I started, which I guess is carried on because I still like taking pictures of portraits mm-hmm. and people rather than yeah. landscape or anything like that. Um, and then, yeah, and then I started doing it at college because it was a course that you could do. So I did that and then went on to do it at uni. Do you think it's scary to do these type of things in college and uni? Because I always say, like, I always make it a point to commend, you know, people who do fashion and, like, photography or any creative type of subject because it's taken away from the status quo isn't it it's not going for the academic route and taking a leap basically and it's a leap of faith because you've got to really have faith that it's going to work out in the end what do you think well my mum said to me um you can't do two creative subjects you have to pick an academic or a creative and I said if I get an A star in art (laughs) then I am going to college to do this and she was like oh Right, okay. She wanted me to do A levels and like sociology and all that kind of stuff, and I'm just not interested in it. So I thought, I know that this is what I'm good at, so I'm going to just try it. And I got an A star, <laughs> and I said, I'm going to do art at college, mum. And she's like, okay then. <laughs> so, but yeah, people think it's like a fake subject, but you work so hard doing mm. it. Um, I think one thing I realised going to college was that it's not for everyone. No. and even that was just tough for me I was like wow like I really actually have to try hard here like it's about putting in the work and doing it and when you go into uni you feel the same it's like I really need to read up on these things and be interested otherwise there's no point to me being here so I think at that point you have to follow the route that you want yeah I think you've got to be like I think there was a lot there's a obviously when you when I started going to college and I was like right I'm gonna do photography I did I did photography, art, drama, mm-hmm. and then I did psychology because I really liked the mind and how people thought, but I didn't realise how mathematical it was going to be. So I got a, U, <laughs> got a U in that, dropped it, even though I tried. <laughs> tried, still got a U, dropped it, um, and then just stuck to the more creative subjects. But I think not 
everybody on my course, a lot of people were either there because they really wanted to do it and they're really passionate about it, mm -hmm. or people were there because they saw it as like an easy subject that they wanted to pick because they didn't want exams. It's frustrating, that, yeah. isn't it, as well? Like, it's not, it's hard work. Yeah. And like you say, like, it's about, I know you said your first picture was the, 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 the reflection in the guitar, but that shows the creative side of you as well. And if you don't have that, then do you think, do you think creativity is like a big part of, you know, being a photographer? Oh God, definitely. Um, I think you, I always say you're either one or the other. Obviously you've got to be a bit of both, but like I'm not very technically minded, yeah. whereas some people are really technically minded, but then don't really have, the same eye mm -hmm. so they're not as creative yeah definitely i'd agree with that i i don't know why i i feel like most male photographers i meet are more about the technology or they'll be like oh have you seen this blah 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 blah, yeah. blah. and i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> why what does it do and they're like oh god you need it like you, i can't live without it and i'm yeah. thinking oh my god maybe i'm not very good because i don't have that yeah but i think it's like you say like people are either mm -hmm. technical and they're like geek out over the gadgets or they're creative but I do find more females are more creative with it than males but then that might just be who I've met who yeah. I've crossed paths with are you both freelance then now yeah. yeah so how did that start out because that in itself as we said you know there's a lot of there's a lot of parts in this way you have to really be faithful and just have some belief that it's gonna work how did you take that step so I used to have a full-time job as a photographer mm -hmm. being like taking pictures of shoes it was for La Moda, Do you know La Moda? Um, so I used to work there and then I just found like how my, my creative brain was just kind of disappearing so I said do you mind if I go part-time or freelance um, and they still wanted me to stay with them so I did and then I started at Boohoo um, as freelance and then it just kind of went from there really I just I built up my confidence and my knowledge at Boohoo really and then just carried on from there yeah mm. you just gotta find you've got to find your own work which is a, a big thing really it's, it takes I, I've got a spreadsheet and I'll write all the brands in there that I want to contact. I do that. It takes yeah. it takes days though, doesn't it? Like yeah. collecting them, I'll screenshot yeah. them on like Instagram and then I'll add it to my uh, spreadsheet. And then, yeah, just yeah. email them all. I do. You, <laughs> so I on my spreadsheet, I've got like a list of when I last contacted yeah. them, and then a comment section on like roughly like you know like what they said if they're yeah. like Response. yeah maybe soon. <laughs> I'm like email again. Yeah, <laughs> and then I like right how like when the last time I was that I emailed them so then if I do come to a quiet patch of work I can just go down the list again and kind of know where I where we picked off picked up from last time yeah, so the I onus think. is sort of on you then when you're freelance to find yeah that you've got to, I think you've got to be so productive with it um I think the one of the worst things I did is I got quite complacent with it I had like a good list of clients I was get really like really busy all the time um and then, you know, like, I think, you know, Brexit, stuff like that, like, people stopped booking as much and they were being maybe a bit more cautious about costing and stuff. And I, I think it was beginning of this year, I went quite quiet and I was like, oh my God, but it's because I also I panicked because I hadn't been keeping on top of my emails yeah. of new clients and I just started relying on people that were booking me regularly. So I think you've got to constantly even when you're busy, find time to contact new people, just in case. Mm. Yeah. Because a I, lot of brands <clears throat> will decide to then get a full-time photographer yeah, instead, yeah. and then you're gone. <laughs> yeah. Do you find it hard to, like, so say if you are actually, like you said, when you were working in the Moda, do you think it can sometimes compromise your, your job if you want to do freelance and, like, you know, be a little bit more of a floater rather than just staying employed? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I've never had it because I've never gone back and freelanced somewhere where I have worked. Um, but I've been in companies where, you know, they might, they won't then employ that person as a freelancer because that person's been to maybe competitors and things oh. like that. So they won't, brands won't want one photographer hopping between competitors. Mm. So you've kind of got to be careful on that. Yeah. Which one do you prefer then? I mean, I'm guessing that you probably prefer being freelance. Definitely freelance. You're both freelance. <laughs> Definitely. Have you had any experience with like being employees um so I when when I graduated I moved down to London and I 
was freelance for a bit and I was doing studio assisting and assisting photographers. Then I got a freelance job at a kids clothing company um, and was photographing there. And then I moved to Jack Wills and I was freelance there and there. Um, sorry, I was full time there in their studio. And then I had the same thing where I just felt so compressed creatively and I was getting so frustrated with not having time to test or to really enjoy myself and just being controlled of what I was creating and I just I didn't it didn't suit me so then I went freelance in London and then I moved up to Manchester because I wasn't sure what was up here so I was freelance in London then for like maybe a year and a half and then moved up to Manchester but I didn't want to just be freelance up here straight away because I wasn't sure what was up here. So then apart I got from another everything. <laughs> apart from well, now I know yeah. there's so much up here. Yeah. So then I got a full time job again as a production manager. So I went into something completely different, um, just so I had a secure amount of money because obviously when I left London I had no savings, mm. um, and then I just couldn't hack it. I can't hack doing the same thing every day. It's so boring. I just can't. I need to meet different people and not yeah. know what I'm doing next week. I, I have to. Yeah, it's nice being. I think it's nice being a freelancer because you can go into companies. Yeah. You don't have to deal with their politics. Yeah. And you can just come and you just go. Yeah. And, and you can, and you can get can, the gossip. Yeah, <laughs> get the gossip. Yeah. Meet. Like have a nice girls. chat. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. and you get to meet different teams and different people yeah. and you never know where those people are then, then going to end up or who they might know it's yeah most of my jobs have come through like meeting new yeah. people on jobs like a makeup artist that I'm friends with she always says oh I'm really free on this day I've, yeah uh, my friend needs a photographer so yeah it just it's I who think you know <laughs> word of mouth and who yeah, you know definitely. is so important like communication between new people that you meet and you've, I think you've got to remember as well that you, you know, you can go into a company and you can be working there for one, only one day and you need to make a good impression. Yeah. So if you make that good impression, that will last so much longer than if you work for a company for ages and get really sick of it and don't necessarily give your best every time you go mm. in. Whereas I don't know about you, but I find every time I freelance somewhere, I need to do my best because... You have to impress. Yeah, have to impress every time you're in. I often say this about brands who have got full time as they they won't work as hard as yeah. a freelancer because I want you to book me again. Yeah. So I'm gonna do my best yeah. job and you full time people might not work as hard because they've got the security of yeah. being able to go with They know what tomorrow. they can get away with as well. Yeah. Isn't that funny that like you don't imagine yourself though full time somewhere? Because if you I think couldn't. about like the conventional world, everyone else out there, the majority of people all they I've do got normal is, jobs. Yeah, they yeah. just go to work, they see the same people every day, they do the same thing, come back home after the same hours yeah. in the same place. I'm um, like, people like yourselves, like almost dread that type of idea that you just want to feel like you're doing something new all the yeah. time. Yeah. And it, it is nice. I definitely feel yeah. that as well. It's so nice to just get out and explore. And yeah. I think it's so hard sometimes. Sometimes you do feel very squashed as a creative person. I think. I think it depends on your personality. Like, personally, I thrive on not knowing what's coming next. Like, <laughs> yeah. I like the rush of panic when I'm like, I haven't got anything in next week. But I'm like, oh, my gosh. Because it around. always comes in. Yeah, it's always, it's it so always works it's like out. You, you have a, a doorway, like a gateway, sorry. Yeah. And if I feel, like, a little bit of panic, I just think, oh, no, I've not got any jobs booked in. And then I'll get an email. Yeah. And it's like, some, and, and how did some, you feel my some, panic yeah, something always come it always yeah. works out have you ever always. not been able to pay bills that or do you ever no. like, worry about that no no but i think you've just got to be smart with it as well like you know don't spend all your money when you get it in <laughs> like, yeah like put some aside like try and build up a bit of a fund so you've got enough to fall back on if you go quiet yeah and things december like that. january yeah. yeah you know you you get to know your quiet months you mm. save your yeah. summer jobs for times like this when yeah. it's a little bit quieter do you think and it's a bit quieter now then last december for me was i had like two days i think in the whole yeah. month which i was quite glad for but i've this year i've been really really busy but i don't i haven't got anything booked in for january yet so well what do your days <laughs> look like anyway what's like a typical day in a photographer because i think a lot of people overlook the work that photographers do um 
and it's a lot more hard work as well than you think like it's not just turning up for me as a model I just have to turn up on set that day I'll do my stuff and then after six o'clock or five o'clock I'll leave and I go home and that's it yeah but I think for you you have to make sure you're looking great yeah so that's like a full time go straight to the gym yeah, yeah. that's a yeah. full time the thing anyway because you need to make sure your skin's nice and yeah. your nails are prepped and da 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 whereas when we have our day I think we have the hardest job yeah I do in a studio 100% yeah 100% because I feel like sometimes I feel like I don't even get a minute's break because everything I'm doing I have to be doing something constantly f- that on I'm, it yeah constantly if on it if you're doing e-com like most most places you're doing the shoot then you're doing the selects and yeah. you're renaming and da 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 and it's like a constant thing whereas the makeup artist it might just be chatting away and yeah. and I'm just like please don't speak to me because I'm yeah. not really trying that's to do thing. this that's what I find really hard as well actually sometimes on set like so I'll have so much I'm trying to get done and like I'm thinking about have I done this yes I've done that and there's like codes going through your head and it's then have being able to how like not miss out on the conversations that yeah. other people are having and not looking rude and looking like you want to be a part of the conversation but still kind of like desperately trying to make though, sure you've ever got everything I just say, done I, sorry yeah. I can't speak right now because otherwise I'll do it wrong and then, you'll, <laughs> then you'll have to be waiting for me because I've messed up <laughs> well how do you work out like your rates and things because like personally I would not know how much I cost for this, for this and that. Like, it's so hard. I'm so grateful to have an agency for yeah, those things. I would love an agent. Yeah, same. <laughs> There's not, there, there aren't really any in Manchester. And no. I've thought about getting one in London, but I, I've, I'm getting quite a few jobs myself yeah. anyway at the minute. So if I feel like I needed to, or I feel like it would help me, then I would eventually. Do you ever feel like you're being taken for granted or taken advantage of by clients sometimes because of that? Well, you just don't have protection yeah. as a as a freelancer, so you just have to make sure you're on it and you know what you're saying. You've got everything written down in an email, so it's nothing's like over the phone or being said face to face. So you've got your back up in case you might need it. For have you ever needed it? I have needed it. You yeah. have. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Can you tell the story? Or? Sort of. No sort name of, sort of not. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had it where so, so someone's had me booked in for a day and they it's probably been confirmed for about two weeks because that, that's another thing we could talk about yeah. be it when you're confirmed and penciled and then penciled like in. you might have that job or you might not but then you've got like three pencils but then they all don't come through and yeah. things like that but so anyway so I was penciled in for a job and sorry I was confirmed for a job and the rate I'd been working for this client for like maybe nine months for the same rate and all of a sudden it was a problem and they wanted to pay me less and then they told me that the shoot was going to have to be cancelled because the brief that they were booking me for was cancelled and then when I said that they're going to have to because it was the night before I said well you're going to have to pay me a full day rate now anyway because it's too short too short a cancellation notice and um they said, okay, well, fine, we've, we've got this little brief, but we only want to pay you, um, you know, a third of what we were going to pay you because it's a, it's a smaller brief, it's just for social. And then when they sent the brief through, I was like, oh, that was the brief you originally booked me for? You'd already sent it through? So then they tried to book me for the same thing, but for, like, a third, and I was well, just like, no. you've been working with them for nine months as well. It's just, like, have <laughs> yeah, some respect. I know. I've, it was just... I've given you your creator for nine months, yeah. and now you're just going to try and... Do you think that's awkward as well? Like, yeah, it is awkward. Yeah. you have to really fight for yourself as yeah. well. Yeah. Like, I could probably let my agents, like, argue it out with the people and turn yeah. up and still be best friends with everyone, but you could be probably, like... I think, I think it's just... You have to be professional about it, and you have to know where you stand... And you've got to be nice to, as well. You've got to know your worth and you've just got to politely say, I'm really sorry, like, that's just not going to work. <laughs> like, if we you're, can't if do, you're like, nice, then yeah. there's no way that they can come back and, yeah. you know, like, get... You need to be nice but not be taken advantage of, exactly. basically. There's, like, a, I think, a fine line where you can kind of just about balance it. Do you think yeah. that would be your advice to any, like, freelancers or photographers that ever get into that position then to just maintain 
how you should be treated and yeah I think you've just got to know your worth be confident in you yourself and what you're going to give that company and just have adult conversations like make sure that you're kind of really professional about it and you've like you say got it all backed up in an email all the conversations and things like that even if you've had a conversation on the phone then email that company and just say hi just to confirm what you said on the phone this is the agreed rate blah 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 blah. and then you've got it all there and you've yeah. got yourself yeah, covered it's so important to have everything written down do you ever find like difficulty in like um, estimating rates and things and then probably realising that the edit and that it's going to take is going to be crazy. I do that so much. Yeah, I undersell <laughs> myself a lot or, I'll, or I'll think, mm, that doesn't sound like that much of a big job and yeah. then I'm like, oh shit, it really is. I've, I think I, what I've done is just, it's, it's just practice. Like I've started to know just to go maybe a little bit over what I probably would cost the job because then in the end it will probably balance out because you always get to a shoot and the client's always like oh do you mind just doing this or do you mind just doing this or actually we're gonna put these images here and you're like oh that's not quite what you yeah. originally said um so I think you've just got to like think of the cost of the equipment you're using the time it's going to take you um and just estimate as best as possible how much you the need to charge is a big one as well like I didn't even think of that. Like, how much do you actually spend on equipment, yeah, do you think? It's, it's thousands. Thousands and thousands, thousands and thousands. Wow. Well, even a camera is, like, over a thousand. So it's... Yeah, I think mine is probably about, like, with lenses and yeah. everything, maybe two and a half. Or yeah. How do you start out? Like, if I was to say, right, I'm going to become a photographer now. I mean, I wouldn't, but... <laughs> if I was... What, where Just would I start? Case. Would I buy a camera? And that was it, like... How did you figure out what equipment you needed? And I, th I think because I knew I was heavily interested in it and invested in doing it for a long time, it was okay to buy a good camera eventually, but I didn't start out with the best camera. But obviously, because I was only like, what, 16, 17, when I started photography, you didn't need the best camera. Like, I didn't need the best camera then. But if you're starting out now, I think just practice until you get to know which brand you like you might like canon you might like nikon and just don't invest beautiful. don't go out and just buy the best camera because that doesn't that isn't what takes good photos it's the person yeah. behind yeah. it what is it that people look for in photographers do you know because like it's funny how you say pencils in and all of that type of stuff i thought that only happened to models and i don't i don't know like what do they I actually how critical are they of your work um, it depends on the brand. Most people will book you because they already know what you do and they like what how you shoot. Um, I've never really had anyone say that they didn't that they didn't like the images or that they weren't yeah. happy because um, they booked you for a reason. Yeah, people. I think that's why you've got to have such a strong portfolio and show in your portfolio what you want to be shooting because that's what people book you from. Mm. Yeah. So I've probably had jobs where I've not put them in my portfolio because it's, although it was a good job and I really enjoyed the job and I liked the brand, the pictures they wanted aren't what I want to represent, re represent myself. myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone has that moment, don't they? That you know, shooting and test shooting is great, but yeah, if it's not your style, the, the, yeah. there's some things that you can't put in your book, and yeah. that's just how it is. Sometimes it's just a job and just that. Yeah. Well, most e-com jobs or like smaller campaigns that they're, they're just paying your bills yeah. unless unless it's your vibe so sometimes if I do a shoot I'm like oh my gosh I really really love that shoot and I'll just plaster it all over my Instagram for as long as I possibly can <laughs> I loved your red theme when you had it on Instagram oh. do you remember like the colour themes oh yeah that was really good that was yeah. like my yeah. I, I had a yellow that. one as well yeah I loved the yellow people were really into that but I just could not be bothered to keep it up <laughs> that must be such hard work because you have to were they yeah. test shoots that you did that you so I'd gone out made, of my way to yeah, like to get on yeah. red styling yellow styling and then it just got too much and I just couldn't be bothered anymore. I thought, I know, I'll have a life instead. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel as conscious as, like, other people do, like, models and makeup artists about your Instagrams and, like... No, not anymore. And things like that now? No. How has it changed? I don't know. I used to I used to be like, oh, I've not posted today. I need to post something. But then I realised I was just filling squares. Like, I was posting something for the sake of it and... It wasn't, it didn't mean anything it's to me. It's not good content. No, I so I'd just rather not. Yeah, sometimes quantity doesn't 
like equate to quality and that's yeah. something that I've been wrapped up in so long you're encouraged to post so much but if it's no good then no I think if your website's strong enough then that's fine so I just whatever test shoots I do that I really love I'll put them on mm-hmm. any jobs that I've really love put that on but then as long as your website's strong and your Instagram's got your vibe that's fine well let's talk about our achievements then Rosie what's your biggest achievements oh I don't know let me think are we gonna name drop so, yeah <laughs> I don't I think what a moment for me where I was like this is cool is um I was shooting a campaign for Hackett and we were shooting at the top of um the Tate Modern in London oh, and I was like this is quite cool. <laughs> yeah, when you have those moments and you're like, is this my job? Yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm getting paid to do this. Yeah. I think when you travel anywhere, like, it's so nice. Like, I think this year I experienced my first, like, international jobs. Yeah, you've and they, been smashing yeah, it. Yeah, they didn't seem to stop. And I was like, wow. <laughs> when I saw that you were in in Paris with Miss Guy, I was like, oh, yes, girl. <laughs> That's so cool. That was just like, oh, my, like, I, do you ever feel like that when you get confirmed for something and you're like, no, that, that's not real. Like, no. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I think it's when a brand you love wants to work with you and yeah. you just think, that's cool. Yes. <laughs> it's <laughs> amazing to see, like, your, your dreams and, like, your goals, like, crystallise in front of you then and yeah. just become real. Like, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I think mine would be, I've just been to Milan last week um, and the fact that I was there with my friends and I was yeah. work working like it doesn't feel like work when you're with your friends and we, j- we just did such such a great shoot with great girls and I thought this is a really cool the job. pictures looked amazing Thanks. and like your your stories it was just like I want to be in that party and it was really yeah. just it That's was just weird <laughs> so what are our hopes for the future then what what else do you want to do as if you haven't already got it good enough <laughs> I want to do more arty stuff. I want to go back to when I actually created projects for myself because that's, that's the stuff I'm passionate about. It's hard to keep up with, isn't it? Yeah, because I, I shoot... Well, I used to just shoot all on film and I just want to go back to that because I've become... I've become a digital girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I think 35 mil Emma was so much better and cooler. So I, think, I think next next year I want to do way more test shoots and stuff like that on film mm. and get That'd my cool. arty vibe back. What about you, Rosie? Um, I don't know, when you first said that, I thought, oh, I wanna shoot a Gucci campaign and I want oh my, my work in Vogue, say. but that is this like, is like, so but like, that is like really, <laughs> that is like shooting that's right there. But that's done, what, that's like my life ambition. So that's hopefully, it might not be next year, but hopefully in the next couple of years well, that will come Gucci, up. Well, Gucci, if you're listening, or Vogue. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Rosie and we'll get a hashtag. We'll get, a, get Rosie Gucci. It'll happen. Dream believe achieve. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we've got to finish on, isn't it? Like, I think that's a good note to finish on for everyone. Like, don't ever aim, think that you're aiming too high because it's not. Lots of things that we've already achieved is like, you probably would never have thought that back in college. Oh, did yeah, you ever definitely. think that you would have been travelling to Milan and doing all that, no. like, with your friends? And, you know, it's I'm shooting in the in the <laughs> heat. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to everyone for coming anyway. And oh, that's the you. end of our episode. Thank you. <laughs> <Lol>. <laughs> so therefore, I'm going to be 100 with you and tell you really what it she was. just got real.